hello guys and welcome to another calculus video. In this video we are going to be calculating the Laplace transform of this function right here, 1 over x squared plus 1 or 1 over t squared plus 1. And though this doesn't seem like a very difficult or complicated problem, it is pretty tricky because the Laplace transform does not work very well with rational functions. However, there is actually a nice little closed form with non-elementary functions for this particular case of rational functions. So let's go ahead and take a look at the solution here. So we're going to use these two special functions, si of x, which is equal to the integral from 0 to x of sine of v over v dv. Uh, and so then the limit as x goes to infinity of si of x is pi over 2. Also, the derivative of si of x is just sine of x over x. Also, this other function, ci of x, is negative the integral from x to infinity of cosine of v over v dv, such that the limit as x goes to infinity of ci of x equals 0. Uh, ci of x is, uh, approximates ln x as x goes to 0, and the derivative of ci of x is um, cosine of x over x. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So our function y of x is 1 over x squared plus 1. Uh, you could also say y of t, since that's normally a little bit more uh, typical when we're using the Laplace transform, but I'm just preferring to use x just for right now. So our function y of s, which is what we're actually solving for, is the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative sx over x squared plus 1 dx. And notice something that we can do here is if we actually differentiate y of s, we get y prime of s equals the integral from 0 to infinity of negative x e to the ne negative sx over x squared plus 1. And if we take the derivative again, we actually get this nice x squared out in front. And what this means is if we add y double prime and y together, so you can see right here, uh, this is the capital Y right here, we get this x squared and this 1, and they end up canceling with the x squared plus 1 on the bottom. So overall, y double prime plus y of s equals the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative sx dx, which is just 1 over s. So our differential equation is y double prime plus y equals 1 over s. And I'm going to go ahead and switch s to x because it's uh, just more used to solving differential equations with x. So we have y double prime plus y equals 1 over x, and we'll replace x with s once we solve it. So we have, in this case, a second order non-homogeneous differential equation, or linear non-homogeneous differential equation. So the general solution to solve these kinds of problems, um, you know, usually we'd actually use the Laplace transform, but because we have 1 over x right here, we cannot do that. So instead, we're going to use variation of parameters. So what that means is the first thing we have to do is uh, know that y is going to equal yc plus yp. Now yc is the generalized solution to the homogeneous equation or the version without this 1 over x here. And yp is the particular solution to this equation right here. So the first thing we have to do is solve the homogeneous equation. So we take out that 1 over x and we get y double prime, of c, y double prime c plus yc equals 0. And this is now a second order linear homogeneous differential equation uh, with constant coefficients. So the solution to that is always going to be something of the form e to the alpha x. So plugging that in into our formula for yc, we get alpha squared e to the alpha x plus e to the alpha x equals 0, or alpha squared plus 1 equals 0, which means that alpha equals plus or minus i. Therefore, yc is going to be c1 e to the ix plus c2 e to the negative ix. And actually, we can write this as c1 prime sine of x plus c2 prime cosine of x. So depending on c1 and c2, you can actually find that um, we can also express this as sine of x plus cosine of x with different constants right here. It's important to know that c1 and c1 prime are not the same. So then this is our value for yc. So now we're going to start with var variation of parameters. So our yp is going to be u1, where u is some function of x, times sine of x plus u2 times cosine of x. And we can also assume that u1 prime times sine of x plus u2 prime times cosine of x is going to be 0. Um, that's just a fundamental assumption that we're going to use, and that assumption is uh, allowed because there are multiple different sets of functions u1 and u2 that can satisfy this equation. So uh, we're going to go ahead and choose u1 and u2 that satisfy this other equation as well. So when we calculate y prime of p, notice that these first two terms right here are going to go to 0 by this little um, by this relationship that we just set up, and we're also going to get u1 cosine of x minus u2 sine of x. 
And this means that y double prime of p is u1 prime cosine of x minus u1 sine of x minus u2 prime sine of x minus u2 cosine of x. So overall, when we calculate y double prime of p, uh, y plus y p, plus, uh, sorry, y double prime p plus y p, we get u1 prime cosine of x minus u1 sine of x minus u2 prime sine x equals 1 over x. So that's this equation right here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to multiply this whole function by tangent x. So the reason we want to do that is that we actually get u1 sine of x right here, which means um, this u1 sine of x we can add and subtract u2 cosine of x, or sorry, u1 prime sine of x. We, we can add and subtract u2 prime cosine of x, and then we can eliminate these two terms together because we already we know that that's equal to zero, and we can get an equation in terms of u2 prime, which we can then solve for. So when we go ahead and do all these steps, these two terms cancel right here. So overall, we're just left with this term and this term equaling tan x over x. So we get u2 prime uh, times negative sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x, which is just 1 over cosine of x, equals tangent x over x. Or u2 prime equals negative sine x over x, which means that u2 equals negative si of x. And notice that I didn't put a plus c here, and that's actually uh, a really cool thing in variation of parameters. You do not to need to include the plus c because the plus c is actually included in our value of yc, so we don't have to worry about that at all. Then we go ahead and plug in the value of u2 right here, um, and actually u2 prime, back into this equation right here, and we can go ahead and solve for u1. Pretty straightforward, 1 minus sine squared of x equals cosine squared of x, so u1 prime equals cosine of x over x, or u1 equals ci of x. Again, no plus c is necessary. So now we have, we're have we going to switch everything back to uh, terms of s. So we're going to get that y of s equals yc plus yp, which is c1 plus ci of s times sine of s plus c2 minus si of s times cosine of s. And this is the same as the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative sx over x squared plus 1 dx. Now we know that if we take the limit as s goes to 0, we're going to get the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over x squared plus 1, which is just pi over 2. And notice that if we plug in s equals 0 everywhere else, um, right here, si of 0 is just 0. Cosine of s is 1, so we get c2 from all of this. Sine of s is 0, so that cancels out with this c1. And the limit as s goes to 0 of sine of s times ci of s equals 0, because this is on the order of ln s right here. And so that's not hard to prove using the hospital's rule. So this is 0, so that means this whole term is 0. And that means pi over 2 is just going to be equal to c2. So that tells us c2. Uh, and then as s goes to infinity, y of s is going to 0, um, just because this exponential is going to immediately become 0 everywhere in the domain. Uh, pi over 2 minus si of s, which is going to be this term right here, also goes to 0. So that means we're just left with this term right here. So that means that c1 plus ci of s times sine of s has to also go to 0. And note that sine of s oscillates infinitely, uh, as or just oscillates forever. So Actually, in the case that we have a sine of s times some coefficient at infinity, we actually would not have a limit as we go to infinity. So that means that this term has to be 0 right here, but we know that ci of s is 0, so that means c1, of, c1 is also 0. So overall, this gives us our final answer. The Laplace transform of 1 over x squared plus 1 equals ci of s times sine of s plus pi over 2 minus si of s times cosine of s. And note that this can also be written um, sort of in a similar way to ci of s. Both are the integral from x to infinity of um, sine x over x. So I just think that's a really cool little problem. Uh, not too difficult, but it is a little bit tricky, and it gives us a very fun differential equation. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and uh, I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.